As shocking as John Moxley's appearance at All Elite Wrestling's Double or Nothing pay-per-view was, it may not be as shocking as the comments Moxley made with Chris Jericho today on Jericho's Talk is Jericho podcast. Comments that include his reasons for leaving the WWE and some of the distasteful things that they wanted him to say. Today featured the release of The Emancipation of John Moxley, a highly charged appearance by Jonathan Good, best known for his WWE run as Dean Ambrose and now who works under the name John Moxley, and in it, Moxley discussed his highlights and lowlights of his career, as well as his low opinion of the current WWE product. These points give reason to why WWE won't hire John Moxley ever again, and why Moxley won't ever return to it. First off, on a positive note, he did at least thank the WWE for his experience. Although Moxley ultimately chose to leave the WWE, he expressed his gratitude for all the company allowed him to do, becoming a top star, transforming from a boy into a man, and meeting his wife. Nonetheless, Moxley decided to leave the promotion because of several problems he felt could not be corrected by the WWE. As number two, he was repeatedly asked to cut stupid promos. One theme ran through Moxley's interview, the constant stupidity of WWE's so-called creative process. Promos proved problematic regardless of whether he was playing a face or a heel, with writers coming up with unrealistic dialogue that Moxley often complained about. He recalled one promo where he was playing a babyface known for being off the wall and unpredictable, yet the promo he was given to say insulted not only his intelligence, but that of the fans. He recalls items from the promo along the line of riding a unicycle backwards and sharing a pizza with a homeless man. Although he complained to the writer and eventually spoke with Vince McMahon, the WWE chairman told him his character was crazy and his promo not only fit him perfectly, but it would help him get over. Later in his career, Moxley was working as a heel and was asked to cut a number of promos on Seth Rollins, whom he was feuding with at the time. One example of the bad promos was where Moxley was supposed to run down the live audience, calling them smelly and joking about how he wouldn't come to the ring without a pooper scooper. After complaining about the promo, Vince McMahon sent out a memo stating that Dean needs to read his promos verbatim. Moxley recalled his frustration and felt an actor was better suited for what he was being asked to do than a wrestler who was trained to talk people into a building. He recalled another promo that McMahon wrote where the lunatic fringe was asked to wear a surgical mask into the ring to protect himself from the fan's germs. During his conversation with Jericho, Moxley questioned McMahon being a creative genius given these and some of the other promos he was asked to cut. Number 3. He was physically and mentally exhausted. The combination of WWE touring schedule and Moxley's repeated frustration with the creative process led into him being burnt out. He mentioned, I remember leaning on a road case and just feeling actual exhaustion, just like emotional, physical, mental exhaustion. Not so much because of that day, but because of six years of this. Six years of having to go into this man's office, this old man, and trying to explain to him why wearing a surgical mask is a stupid idea, why carrying a little red wagon to the ring is a stupid idea, why maiming a mannequin in the ring is a stupid idea. I was done. Despite feeling burnt out, as he rehabbed his injury, he decided to pull all his efforts into becoming the best wrestler he could and see if he could persuade McMahon to his side of things. Number 4. His love for great performances influenced his decision to leave. Moxley told Jericho that he enjoys watching music concerts during his downtime, especially performances that stand out to him as examples of greatness such as Freddie Mercury's Live Aid performance. Watching the performances while he was recovering from his triceps injury, Moxley realised he hadn't felt good about his wrestling performances in years. During his rehabilitation, he stepped away from wrestling, but as his return drew closer, he immersed himself in the sport, watching vintage tapes and current action ranging from Ring of Honor to Impact to the WWE. The combination of a sabbatical from wrestling and his immersion in it seemed to recharge his batteries, with Moxley feeling psyched about his return. He had many ideas for his return, but over time, he realised that the WWE's terrible creative team would ruin things and Vince McMahon wouldn't let him perform any of them. At that point, Moxley pictured himself coming back to wrestling, but anywhere except the WWE such as CZW or New Japan. Number 5. The Moment When He Wanted Out Moxley knew the moment when he was going to leave the WWE. 
He was just returning from his triceps injury when he realized he was done with the WWE. This happened during the July 19th Monday Night Raw in Milwaukee when he performed a skit where a doctor inoculated him against the quote unquote disgusting fans. Vince told him it was a non-comedic spot and would get him serious heat. He told him if that's what he wanted for the show, he was the best man for the job. Nonetheless, Moxley realized he was done, and while he would do his best, he began counting the days until his contract ended on 30th April 2019. Moxley stated he was so determined to get out of the WWE that even if no competition existed at the time, he would have started his own wrestling promotion and trained his competitors. While he momentarily considered trying to get himself fired or asking for his release, two things stopped him. He didn't want to put any heat on his wife, WWE announcer Renee Young, and he half-jokingly said he didn't want to lose out on any Shield merchandising revenue. Number 6. He was asked to cut distasteful promos that touched on Roman Reigns' leukemia. One of the most disturbing things Moxley was asked to say was an attack on Roman Reigns in his battle against leukemia. What goes around comes back around on you. I mean, look at Roman. He has the answer to the man upstairs. When Moxley protested the line, McMahon told him he needed to include Roman as Reigns was part of Ambrose's heel turn. In hindsight, Moxley blamed it on Vince's legendary Vince Jedi mind trick, something Jericho could attest to. While Moxley cut the promo, he regretted it as soon as he did, and when Vince asked him to cut a similar promo the next week, he refused. Moxley told Jericho the line was so distasteful, he wouldn't repeat it. He even believed it would have cost the WWE sponsors had he said it. Number 7. How he gave his notice Moxley said his first and only love, besides his wife, is wrestling, but that the WWE had killed his ability to perform. He knew an offer was coming, but he knew he wouldn't sign it under any circumstances, which led to the moment when he revealed his decision. I'm waiting for it because I'm relishing the opportunity to get a new contract and then saying, not interested. I'm like waiting for it. I'm excited for it because I don't know how they're going to react. Eventually it doesn't come and then it's like Royal Rumble weekend and I'm thinking like, I know I'm supposed to work with Seth on Monday and Mark Carano says it's coming on Monday and Hunter wants to give it to you personally or whatever. I just couldn't hold it in anymore. We were at some access or something. I just couldn't hold it in anymore. I was like, dude, look in 114 days or whatever it was, I'm gone. This is what I told Vince too and Hunter. I said this is not a decision I came to fast or lightly. This has been a long time coming. I'm not going to change my mind. This is not about any one particular thing. This is not an emotional decision. This is happening. I'm leaving and it's okay. He told Vince everything that was on his chest, including the sick feeling he got every Monday when a writer approached him. He said he just wanted to get away. He told Vince he wasn't signing no matter how many zeros they put in it. Moxley said he had a million dollar man complex and felt he could buy superstars, claiming that's why he pays Brock Lesnar millions to ruin his company. Number 8. He never looked at his WWE contract offer Moxley claims he never looked at his contract because he knew he was leaving to practice the craft he fell in love with. Number 9. He didn't think the WWE would keep him on the air Ambrose was somewhat surprised when the WWE kept him on the air after he gave his notice feeling the company would keep him at home until his contract ran out. While there were some attempts to use Ambrose to get others over, he could only recall two attempts to bury him. One of the occasions was the Nia Jax bump. Moxley stated he had no problem putting Nia Jax over as this is 2019. However, he felt the timing was uncanny as the announcement came right after he gave his notice to the WWE. Moxley said he had fun working briefly with Jax, but he called McMahon out for trying to bury him on his way out. Vince told him that WWE wasn't going to try and do that, but labelled an Ambrose vs Jax match as an attraction. Number 11. How losing to EC3 backfired After giving his notice to the WWE, the promotion announced it on its website, confirming that Moxley was on his way out, although some believed his departure was a work. As a result, fans weren't surprised when Ambrose put over superstars on his way out, one being EC3. Unfortunately, the move backfired in Moxley's opinion. He mentioned, They then put me against EC3 debuting from NXT. Great talent, great friend of mine, excited to work with him. They have EC3 come in as a babyface and defeat me in two minutes. 
The crowd does not like this because it's transparent what's happening. This is not good for EC3 because he's going to get the backlash, so this is an unfair position for him to be put in. So then we get to that weekend and I'm working with EC3 on house shows. Now I'm the biggest baby face on the show. I'm a heel, I'm thumbing him in the eye, I'm making fun of the town, doesn't matter they're violently rejecting me as a baby face and cheering the hell out of me because it has nothing to do with him, it's like an anti WWE yeah? Number 12. Ambrose feels he was meant to leave the WWE. While Moxley feels the WWE lost out on utilising him properly, he has no regrets and feels as if his career is starting over again. He also feels that his time in AEW will be an opportunity to change the business. Number 13. He holds Vince McMahon responsible for the state of the WWE. While Moxley doesn't feel Vince alone is responsible for the WWE's downfall, he thinks the company began declining after the end of WCW and Vince built an infrastructure of bad creative talent around him. The WWE's creative process sucks. It doesn't work. I've said that to Vince, I've said that to Hunter, Michael Hayes, I can't even tell you how it works. It doesn't work. It's killing the company and I think, and I think Vince is the problem. Vince and the structure around him of writers and producers. The WWE's creative process is one reason Moxley joined AEW, as he's out to prove that the WWE's creative process just doesn't work. However, Moxley has no ill will towards the WWE and, and hopes the WWE will work to improve its product. And number 14. He was paid a pittance for his final appearance in The Shield. Moxley recalls getting paid $500 for his appearance on the WWE Network special, The Shield's final chapter. Moxley laughed about the payout and said he believes it's the bare minimum paid for WWE superstars. Jericho joked that this was one last F you from Vince, something Moxley didn't dispute. Rumour has it things could have been far worse as Vince McMahon was enraged when he heard Moxley's debut at Double or Nothing, feeling that Moxley was only leaving to the WWE to film Cage Fighter with an imminent return. According to Brad Shepard's Oh You Didn't Know podcast, Vince was actually, he was actually furious about something. What could that be you ask? Well, he was fuming mad because, and, and I've confirmed this with multiple sources, Dean Ambrose aka John Moxley worked Vince McMahon and WWE absolutely. He worked everybody. So that was literally the expectation that he gave WWE. He lied to Vince, he lied to everybody and said he was just going to make a movie in Hollywood. So WWE would have never given him such a nice long send off if they thought he was going to AEW. That's what I was told. But there you have it guys, why WWE won't hire John Moxley ever again and why Moxley won't ever return. What are your thoughts on these points? Is this good evidence to prove that Vince is really out of touch with the wrestling product? Let us know in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.